Hey guys, so about a week ago, uh, with the help of my girlfriend Christina, we got the T-Bar Tornado unboxing and set up. And that went kind of late into the evening. Um, when we did our first test print, the only test print we had available was the one that TiVo does on the bed. And we had a very difficult time removing that from the bed, so we just decided that's it, we're done, we don't like the surface. So we removed it from the bed. So I'm gonna kind of pick up where we left off. I've been reading a lot of the Facebook posts on the TiVo Tornado Owners Group, and there were a lot of really good suggestions, so what I'm gonna do is I, as I get this guy back together, and work towards getting that first test print, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I read about and saw along the way that I think are pretty darn clever. So let's get to it. Let's start putting this thing back together and uh, see if we can't get a nice test print out of the TiVo Tornado. Hey guys, welcome to where nerdy is cool. I know what you're thinking. You probably two things. Where's the rest of my hair? Where's the beard? And where's the pretty other half? Well, I'll answer all those questions and more here shortly. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Paul. Uh, I am your humble host here on my channel where nerdy is cool, where we cover all my fun, wild, interesting hobbies kind of all wrapped up in the one channel. R2 building, stormtroopers, 3D printers, you name it, I got a bunch of interests, and rather than making a bunch of independent channels, I've put them all into one. So, welcome. Um, if this is your first time seeing me or catching my channel, be sure to check out my other videos. I got a bunch of stuff out there. I think you'd find it very interesting. Um, if you're not a subscriber already, please consider doing so. Just go ahead and bang that button down there in the corner and become a subscriber. And make sure you hit the little bell so that any new videos that come out, you'll get a little email saying, Paul's made new stuff. So. Uh, that said, so here we go. Um, I've got the multiple cameras set up and yeah, it's, it's springtime. So it was time for the beard to go away and I don't have a whole lot of hair to begin with, but, uh, uh it was time for that to go too. Where's Christina? Well, Christina has been feeling a little under the weather and, uh, she's asked to be absent from this video. So that I'm going to respect her wishes and do so. So, uh, I apologize for not having my uh, attractive significant other here helping out but uh, I'm hoping she'll be here for the next one. So I've done a bunch of stuff here with the TiVo Tornado and I've been printing uh, some accessories that I found on Thingiverse and some that were suggested, um, similar to what I saw for the CR10S and the CR10. Uh, these are the bigger bed knobs so that rather than you know, twisting these you know, tiny little guys, uh, it's a whole lot easier to make adjustments with these bigger knobs. So that was uh, one upgrade. Another one that I printed out, and actually one that I already have on here, is I got these nice little covers. And uh, the beauty of having multiple 3D printers is that I did all of these on the uh, Ultimaker 2 Plus uh, using uh, some fantastic uh, uh, Ultimaker Green, which seems to match pretty nicely with the TiVo Tornado. Uh, I also printed a nice little X-axis uh, cover because as it is right now, it just has a black plate on there. So let's make it look a little prettier there and let's kind of glam it up a little, right? So there we go, that's on there. The other thing that was suggested was something for uh, uh, keeping the heated bed wire uh, a strain relief. So uh, that's what this one is right here. And uh, that's gonna go on the edge uh, of the uh, uh, this glass piece here, uh, get pinched on and uh, then bolt up through. So I think this is gonna work out pretty nicely. Now, one of the biggest frustrations we had in removing the print surface that comes with the TiVo Tornado was you peel, you peel, you peel, and then you have this great big sticky adhesive thing left behind. And it wasn't a whole lot of fun to clean up. There were a lot of suggestions, WD-40, heat gun, some other stuff. We used WD-40 and we scraped and we scraped and we scraped. And then once we had that cleaned off, then we went over it with some rubbing alcohol just to get all the you know, junky residue off of there. Uh, and then we took the trash can and let it sit outside for a night or two because the WD-40 smell was just a little beyond intoxicating. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to get this bed mounted back on uh, to the uh, bottom of the uh, printer, obviously. And from there, what we're going to do is one of the things that I noticed and someone made a really great suggestion is that when you do um, run these screws, uh, through here and then into, you know, with the screw, 
And then of course, you know, the, the bottom piece. Um, one of the things that happens is that when you later want to turn these knobs to adjust, uh, the top of this head just spins and spins and spins. So one of the, of the really clever suggestions that were made, and I went to the hardware store to get this, was just to use a, get a nut. <laughs> and the other suggestion is because you're going to be tightening this up on top of a you know glass build plate, uh, add a washer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that to all of these guys. And we're not going to make it super crazy tight, but obviously we want it so that it's going to hold the uh, screw in place so that when we're turning the knobs, we're only adjusting the height and compression of that spring. So hopefully that will work. Okay, let me move uh, camera number two here a little closer. All right, so I was doing a quick double check to make sure that everything was in position here for uh, our strain relief here. Couldn't quite remember if it was the top or the bottom here, but we're gonna be good. So let's. Oh, don't you love it when a plan comes together? The Camera number two here. All right, so this is the polypropylene that I got from Tiny Machines. And uh, get that loaded up here. can't fit this on there. So <laughs> that kind of stinks in a way, but so I'll probably have to go without the strain relief. Hmm. Because of course if I'm using the regular glass, well let me just see. If I'm using the included glass it just sits kind of in the middle and wouldn't affect anything. So what do I do? Do I go get rid of the strain relief? Do I really want to try this print surface out? Hmm, I think the strain relief will have to go. We'll have to find another uh, way of doing that. Because this, already has the holes pre-cut that go across the entire bed. So, didn't see that one coming. All right, so what I will do is I will remove that. And, I'm, well, fortunately, I got my snips over here. Yeah, I got my snips. All right, so let's get rid of the strain relief and uh, let's get this build surface on and, well, we'll move on from there. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, I was working on the printer pretty late into the evening and um, now here it is the next day. And I had done a couple of test prints and I was not having a whole lot of success. Uh, first one was coming off the build plate. The second one I did was a calibration cube and that was massively, massively under extruded. And uh, let me show you a couple of things uh, that I found. Um, first of all, kudos to the uh, uh, TiVo Tornado community on Facebook. They had a lot of great answers. And uh, let me show you one of the things that I found. 
So one of the gotchas we ran into was going through the uh, menus here. There is an option under control and under filament. This thing over here was turned on. So <laughs> that made all the extrusion problems uh, I was encountering. So if you turn that off, chances are most of your problems are going to go away. So now that that is off, that is all set and done. The other thing that I did, and uh, let me do a quick power cycle so you can see it, is I upgraded the firmware. So you'll see now that this is running version 1.1.8. And what I did, I went into the firmware and I enabled the mesh bed leveling. Uh, there's a couple of schools of thought when you're you know, leveling these printers. Um, and I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube that are very good. Uh, most people will tell you you want a very flat surface, so don't do the mesh leveling because it's, all it's going to do is do all the calculations and compensate. Really, if you have a good flat surface and if you do the proper bed leveling, uh, you shouldn't have any troubles. So what I did is I did uh, heat the bed up to 50 degrees. I didn't heat up the nozzle and I went around each corner and uh, Basically what I did is I got it so that the nozzle was touching the bed, then I'd bring it up a quarter turn. And then I did some test prints and those came out okay. Uh, uh, one of the ones that does a little square at each corner, but it kind of struggled with the middle. So then I decided, well, let's do uh, the uh, mesh bed leveling. And what I was doing is I was using a piece of paper and, you know, I'm kind of thinking the old school way because like with the Ultimakers, they always tell you, you know, you want to go until you feel a little bit of friction and then, you know, that's what you call, uh, you know, the bed is level. And I did the same thing with the mesh bed leveling, but there's a, you have a, a fantastic amount of control there between, you know, how much it's grabbing or not. And I found that if you just start to feel, at least with this piece of paper, you know, the size of this paper, if you just start to feel it touch a little bit, that seemed to be the sweet spot. So there it was. So anyway, with that said, we, we got some prints, and let me uh, zoom in here and show you. So this right here, as soon as the uh, focus hits here, you'll see that uh, this was our uh, massively under-extruded print. And uh, what had happened here is, you know, once I had turned off that option, uh, I was able to do a second print. And unfortunately, with my second print, you know, I, I bought this print service <clears throat> from Tiny Machines and uh, polypropylene. And I think what happened was twofold. They say on the first layer, you want to make sure you're printing slow. And I think on the profile I had, it was only going, you know, like 30% slow. When I was looking at the print speed and it was like something crazy, like 80 millimeters a, a you know, a, a minute or something, just crazy fast. So that first layer, <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> it's supposed to be, you know, you want to print really, really slow that first layer. So that didn't happen. And, and this poor guy just popped off. The uh, profile I'm using now, the fastest speed I have it set for is 60 uh, millimeters, you know, uh, a minute. And uh, so now with the profile, the first layer uh, slows it down to 50%. So you definitely have, uh, you know, a slow, you know, a slow speed to, to build up that first layer. And this is the one that just came off the printer right now. And pardon my wobble here. And uh, let me look at the top here too. And as you can see, that's uh, significantly better. Uh, that no top and uh, you know kind of the you know what happened to you uh, the cameras playing games here sorry guys so <clears throat> so the goal for the last 24 hours was to get a good first print off the TiVo and it looks like we've done that as you can see you know the uh, skirt over here um, I still think that's maybe a little too close to the uh, bed but you know what overall I'm just happy that I have a good first print going on Okay, so we've managed to get <laughs> a good, good print, uh, as I showed you a moment ago. And so let's kind of review what we've done here. So what we did is we printed off a few accessory pieces for the uh, printer. Um, we got the bed leveling knobs. We also uh, had a kind of an epic fail with the uh, strain relief because if we had used that one, it would go across the top of the bed and we wouldn't be able to put this print surface on, but that's okay. We overcame and adapted. Uh, we're just not using it right now. There are a few other designs that other uh, TiVo owners have pointed out to me, so I think I'm going to check a few of those out, and uh, that might be something we can use. We also installed um, below these machine screws here for the bed leveling. Um, we did put a washer and a nut under there, hoping that would prevent this thing from rotating on us when we were trying to adjust the bed. 
Uh, it's. I would love to say it was a huge success, but I have noticed when I was leveling the bed in a few spots that, sure enough, you know that screw was turning a little bit. So it's less than before, but it's still a work in progress. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, you saw the test prints, uh, the bed leveling knobs. We got the little cover piece. The gotcha on the TiVo Tornado, making sure that that filament setting is turned off is a big thing. I wish TiVo would have included a filament, uh, uh, you know, something to put the filament on. Or actually, if they'd included filament, that would have been really cool too. We went through a lot of stuff on the extruder, wondering, you know, geez, you know, maybe we should uh, go through and make sure that the e steps are correct. And after a lot of work, it turned out that the stock setting of 400 is just, just right. Um, the other thing that I would, I'm not in love with this Bowden tube. I do have some Capricorn tubing I want to replace it with, but I think we'll do that at a future time. You know, you can only do so many upgrades at a time, you really need to dial in the printer first. So I think right now we're on the right path. Speaking of the right path, if you are into 3D printing or if you have questions about your TiVo or you have suggestions to offer, just wanted to remind you, I do have a 3D printing forum. The website for that is 3dprintingforum.us. So if you like talking about printers or if you have questions or you wanna scroll through, I've got a fairly good sized community over there. So feel free to check out that website. So as I wrap this up, I hope you've enjoyed the TiVo Tornado setup, kind of part two here. There's gonna be more things we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna definitely try to get Christina involved in it because I really am excited about her wanting to be involved in 3D printing. I know she has a few things she wants to print out. Uh, I just ordered some more filament from our friends at Printed Solid. She wants to print out a Alice in Wonderland cat, a Cheshire cat, so that should be a lot of fun for her. So with that said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I just wanna remind you, if you wanna support me and my channel and the endeavors here online, uh, there's two ways you can do so. We have a link uh, to our Patreon page. That's patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. If you wish to become a Patreon uh, patron, uh, there's a few perks for that. If you donate or become a patron rather, um, if you do the $5 option, you get the after the upload video. So usually two days after I release a video, I. Uh, revisit the video, talk about some of the things we worked on, and uh, a couple behind the, uh, the behind the scenes things. And uh, so that's one of the perks for doing that. If you're not into Patreon, there's another option. On our YouTube homepage, there's a PayPal link right there. If you wanna make a donation through PayPal, hey, if you just wanna you know, throw me a couple bucks for coffee, just kind of an attaboy for doing a good job or you like what I'm up to, thanks, I appreciate that. So that's another option for you. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching my videos. If you're not a subscriber already, please consider doing so, hitting the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Also over here is all my web contacts. So if you wanna catch me on Facebook, Instagram, or our home, our, our website rather, where nerdyiscool.com, that's all over here. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool.